Uh, and I, I feel especially uh, blessed that her and his son are here for a couple of weeks now, and that Judy, Tony, and her daughter Karen are here visiting with us too. It's such a pleasure to see you. Uh, just makes my heart sick. All right. Uh, are there any? Uh, I had a couple announcements and things, but does anyone else have any announcements or joys or concerns? I guess thanks for all the prayers. Um, Steve and me made it through the first 13 days. Post hip replacement, and it's getting better every day. And my mom and dad welcomed us into their home because we have to do these steps. So they made it through as well. How wonderful. Well, thank you, Kay and Jim, for helping out your baby and her hubby. Uh, this, these two announcements are from Carrie. After a session vote on Thursday night, they decided that masks are optional in the building. If you are more comfortable wearing one, please continue to do so. As you can see, <laughs> there's no little plexiglass up here. Uh, the other thing is please sign your name to the letters on the table at the back of the sanctuary. The Presbytery puts out a prayer list for churches and the letters will go to the church is designated for each particular Sunday so that they know that we are keeping them in our prayers. Okay. I uh, want to say congratulations to Myra. She is going to teach at Mullen Elementary next year. Yay! <laughs> and uh, <laughs> finally for me, um, I've turned in my resignation to the women of church and to the ladies' circle. If you have any, uh, uh, you know, call me or call Dr. Thomas. She will be in charge. And the other thing is, uh, same with the emails. I will not be doing the prayer chain emails anymore. Dr. Thomas will be doing those. All right. As you are able, please stand. Abortion. Family of faith, this must be the place. This must be the place for connection and growth, for community and hope. This must be the place for questions like, where are you from? And what do you need? For whispers of, I've been thinking of you, and I've been meaning to ask. We come to this place today with joy, gratitude, and connection. Let us worship God. Join in the prayer of adoration. O oh God, we come with songs aiding to be sung, with words aiding to be spoken, with questions aiding to be answered, with feelings aiding to be expressed, with hearts aiding for love, with arms aiding for embracing. Let your love soak into the spirit and the skin like soothing sad. And lead us to the Lord once there was a page. May we be touched by your loving presence today. Amen. And the West Virginia Hills is on this little weekend circle.
day and found someone offering you unsolicited advice. We've all been there, and we've all done that. It is part of our humanity. Our scripture reminds us today that often in the face of hurt, what people really need is not a list of advice or solutions, but the simple presence of love. So let's pray to God today, acknowledging that we are works in progress and that relationships always come with mistakes and confession. Let us pray. Gracious God, sometimes life feels like the being of the flower. It looks like it should be easy, but we always make a mess. This is particularly true when it comes to our relationships. We so desperately long to say the right thing, to be the right thing, to find the right solution, that we overstep the line. Forgive us for assuming the place you feel. Forgive us for imagining that we and all our humanity could possibly fix all of her in the world. Instead, give us the grace and the strength to stand by our loved ones and their moments of need to witness their hurt without trying to fix it. You are God. We are not. Teach us how to be a friend. Teach us how to ask, what do you need? Teach us how to point to you. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Family of faith, no matter how many times you have spoken without listening or assumed without knowing, you are forgiven. God knows your desire and your intent. So hear and believe the good news of the gospel. Every day is a new day for love. We are claimed, we are forgiven, we are invited into relationship. Thanks be to God for growth and grace that knows no end. Amen.
and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So we are continuing on with our sermon series entitled, I've Been Meaning to Ask. In today's focus, we're examining a portion <laughs> of scripture that we might not visit very often, but indeed it has relevance to us. This is Paul, Paul writing to Timothy about everything that was going on in his life, for he had been held in prison in Rome. Barb and I, before the pandemic, had the opportunity to travel to Rome, and we visited the very prison, the last prison, where Paul and Peter had been held. Now, get out of your mind the type of prison that you might envision with iron bars and a guard walking up and down the hallway. Oh no. This was basically a hole in the ground through the rock through which Paul was thrown down, falling to a wet, dark rock basin. You see, the Romans hoped that the prisoners would, in the fall, break their legs or break bones and then die in that prison. Well, somehow Paul survived this brutal treatment. He had endured in this dark, dank environment. He was fed scraps of food through the only opening that existed. It was an absolutely horrible environment. If he had not been a Roman citizen, he probably would have been executed earlier. But still, he was facing death. At the time of this writing, this was after Rome experienced the great fire. And Nero was blaming the Christians for this great fire. So Paul also faced persecution as did many others. So amidst all of this, Paul had needs. And he was writing these needs in the letter to Timothy. Come to me quickly, he said. Get Mark and bring him with you. When you come, bring the cloak that I left. He was making a list of needs to Timothy in his letter. We can relate. We all have needs. And we all need help at times. In disaster response training, I recall Maslow's hierarchy of needs, if you ever discovered that in school. And if you recall, there's this triangle-shaped diagram, and at the very base, are the basic needs that we have of food, of water, and shelter. But then it reaches another level of human need, safety and security. And then it leads to another level of need, friends, relationships, love. Yes, we all have needs. And we think about people in times of disaster where their home may be destroyed, such as tornadoes that happened yesterday with tropical storm Claudette in the south. Their shelter was destroyed. They had to move out. And they were in search of food, water, and shelter. So here was Paul. Paul in this dark, 
dank environment and he was expressing these needs to Timothy but he knew he faced impending death and even so he was still focused on the message the message of Jesus Christ he expressed awareness and warning about the goldsmith in this writing but notice he did not stay there and dwell in the bitterness and resentment for even in prison he had a calling to be truthful to Jesus you know we all have bad days and we have good days we have bad moments and good moments don't we when times are tough, we are challenged. For some of us, we retreat and think about it, and take time to reflect. And for some of us, we reach out immediately to the nearest friend we have to talk to. We're all different in how we respond to those bad moments. So in the Monday evening Bible study class, the opening question posed to the class was this. What things make a bad day better? Here are some of their ideas. Reach out to a friend. Keep up a positive attitude. Exercise. Go take a walk. Enjoy nature. Pets comfort us. Laughter helps. Create an attitude of gratitude and think of things that you are grateful for. Look forward to something. Listen to music. Join a Bible study group. I did not pay anybody to say that. <laughs> it just came out. You might have your own way of what you do during bad times or bad moments. And I encourage you to work toward the positive, to move forward. Oh, Paul had plenty of reason to be negative or to complain on the negative. He said, at my first defense, no one came to my support, but everybody deserted me. He felt abandoned. He felt deserted. But then he says, may it not be held against them. And going further into a sense of spirituality, Paul says, but the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength. The God who loves us does not abandon us. The God who loves us is with us. The God who loves us helps us to move forward in times of challenge. Think back. Were there times in which you really needed something but you didn't ask? Given that this is Father's Day, I can recall times in my life where I could have used some good advice. I can recall a pastor saying, parenting is one of the toughest challenges in life. I can also recall someone saying, unfortunately, kids don't come with an instruction book. Each child is different. So how do you and I respond to people who are going through tough times? There's a difference between sympathy and empathy. With sympathy, we express regret, but we maintain a distance. <coughs> With empathy, we relate to the person and what they're experiencing. And then there are times where words are just difficult. You don't know what to say. But being there really matters. 
we call this the ministry of presence. That is what Paul felt with our Lord. Presence. For Jesus, who you remember, was also abandoned. Even Peter denied knowing him. And Jesus faced death. And Paul was facing death. Both kept their focus on God, even in those tough times. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Sing it with me.
We are grateful for generations of people who have followed your word. We are grateful for fathers and mothers and families, teachers and those who helped to raise us. Help us as we help others. And dear Lord, we do lift up the needs of people, whether it be basic needs of food, water, and shelter, or whether it's a need for friendship, for relationship, for love. Oh Lord, we know we are blessed. Help us to be a blessing to others. Be with those who are ill. Be with those who are recovering. Be with those who are helping those who are ill or recovering. We are grateful, dear Lord, for the children in our midst. Help us to be your church family. And as your church family, we pray the words that our Lord taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not to the
Let us never forget that God loves you. God loves each and every one of you. God loves the world. So let us share that love with the world. And may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and bless you this day and forevermore. Amen.